Welcome to the show. My name is Chris Piak. I'm the author of How to Win Jobs and Influence Germans, and you're listening to the Immigrant Spirit Podcast. And today um, we talk with uh, Amar Kureshi from Mali Spoon, one of my favorite companies in the world. Um, I have uh, been at your office uh, when you just started out uh, talking to Fabian Siegel, one of your founders. Uh, I have been a very happy customer of your services ever since. Um, uh, Amar, uh, explain a little bit to our audience, what is Mali Spoon, what is your mission? Well, our, our goal is to bring delightful, market fresh and easy cooking back to the people, while at the same time, we build a sustainable supply chain that reduces and minimizes food waste. Um, so, so when we look at a typical supermarket, the food waste that is there because people are not buying them, expired products, um, that's around 20 to 30% easily. Uh, while for us, that same number is around 0.5 to 1%. Uh, so, so that is one of the goals. We reduce food waste in the world, while at the same time, we delight our people uh, and then they enjoy their cooking experience. So very briefly, that's, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I... Um can vouch for the quality of the recipes and the food that's coming in. Um, uh, we are always excited to get a new package and it's really delightful, very tasteful. And uh, I remember when I was in your old office in Berlin, uh, mm -hmm. one of the most uh, awesome things that I saw was that uh, all the different departments were basically on two levels back then. And in the middle, you had a huge kitchen where uh, you tried out recipes every single day. I don't know if you still do that. We still do that. We actually have three kitchens. So two are for everyone to use. And then we have the test kitchen that you're talking about, where our different chefs and culinary managers, they're trying out new recipes uh, every single day. And everyone just tries to get a bite of it. Um, and then at the end of, end of their cooking, they put it out in the staff kitchen. So everyone gets a share of the new recipes that are going to go out. Uh, so, so we are trying tens of recipes uh, every week before they are actually put on the website for the customers. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, tell me a little bit about your department. Uh, you are mm -hmm. head of uh, CVMA at Malispoon. What does yes. this mean? So CVMA means Customer Value Management and Analysis. So that is a combination of CRM, uh, which is typically Customer Relationship Management, Uh, combined with data science and marketing business intelligence. Uh, so that's what we call CVMA. Uh, so I essentially have three hybrid roles, three teams that I'm heading at the moment. Um, that's my role. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you are hiring. You're actually hiring quite a lot. We talked today mm -hmm. about uh, two positions in detail, and uh, then you uh, shared with me just before we started that there are two more positions coming up uh, that you're also hiring about. Mm -hmm. um, Let's start with the position of marketing analyst. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, um, dear listeners on YouTube, uh, if you want to ask Amar a question about one of these positions, feel free to type them in in uh, YouTube. Uh, we also stream on Periscope and on Facebook, but unfortunately there we cannot take questions uh, today. But on YouTube, type in your questions right now already so that you are sure that I will pick them up after the interview. So, uh, Amar, back to, back to you, um, marketing um, analyst. What is, what is the most important thing about this role? The most important thing, I would say, is the curiosity to, to find patterns in data um, and to figure out, you know, what, what are the customers doing, what do they want, and how we can generate insights out of that uh, to help our marketing team uh, do a better job. Mm -hmm. um, what are you looking at uh, from the from the skills side? What what kind of qualification should someone who is interested in this position bring to the table? Um, so the most important qualification I would say is is the curiosity that you love working with data. Um, you know how to drill down in data. You know there there are a lot of people when they start looking at data they get bored. They're like this is a try. Uh, while there are people who get excited. Hey, yeah, we found something, and from that. Found something else. Uh, so, so that, in short, that is the most uh, important thing I'm looking for. Uh, in terms of technical skills, nothing extreme. Um, if you have worked with tools like Tableau or Looker before, 
that's preferable, not necessary. Same with SQL, not mandatory. Uh, so the most important thing, again, is you know how to work with data. You understand things like, you know, what is cost per acquisition of a customer? Um, what are these different KPIs? What is lifetime value of a customer? How do you calculate revenue? Uh, so very basic things. So I would say the most important requirement is not the technical skills, uh, because there are hundreds of people with similar technical skills. It's, it's basically the curiosity uh, to mm -hmm. dive that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I understand. Um, this also hints a little bit already at my next question, which will simply be, um, when you look at all the different people you have experienced in this role, and if you should separate the best from the rest, what mm -hmm. does what do the best people do differently to make them really outstanding? So the best people are proactive. So an average analyst would be like, you give them, hey, we need this analysis and they would be like, okay, we'll get it done. They will get it done. It would look amazing, makes sense. The best ones, I would say the top five, 10 percent ones, uh, what they would do is they would go a step further and try to figure out what else they can find out while they're working on that thing. And also come up with those suggestions. Hey, we also found this on top while we were doing that. Uh, so I think that is really how you differentiate between um, the best ones, the top mm -hmm. person, the average ones. And when you, when you think about um, uh, all the different um, goals and challenges you have mm -hmm. uh, right now in this position, uh, would you share with us uh, one example of one challenge that someone in this position uh, should solve for you to really add value to the team? One uh, big challenge. Uh, okay. Um, I mean, one big challenge for us always is, so we have a lot of transactional data on the customers, you know, and every time you're making a purchase, uh, every time you're interacting with our customer care team to find, you know, something went wrong or you change, you say, hey, I don't like this type of meat, I like this type of meat instead, right? Uh, so, so there is literally tons of data that can be analyzed. Um, so the biggest challenge I would say at the moment for in this role is how do you try to consolidate that and get a view where you actually correlated with the business. So if, if people are saying, hey, we are, we want vegan recipes, right? How does that translate into different metrics of the company? Uh, if we start offering vegan recipes, what does that pool of customer look like? Are there only five vegan customers in our customer base or there are 50,000? Uh, how does that impact the revenue? Uh, can mm -hmm. offer that from a supply chain point of view. Um, so connecting different dots together um, and in a relatively complex environment where I would say there's lots of interaction between different departments. Uh, it's not like marketing can just go and say, hey, we are launching these recipes or we are in decreasing the price of something. It has to, has to look at other aspects within the company. Is, is the supply chain ready? Is the production ready to offer that? Can it be done? Uh, so I think making that those connections in between, uh, I think that that can be quite challenging for some of the people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that actually seems that uh, that also means that um, again, people who can look a little bit deeper, you know, mm -hmm. just don't see the surface, but to really look at what follows after that. Yes, and the people who can make connections between things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, when we talk about the data uh, scientist role, how does this differ from the marketing analysis? So data scientist role is, is a little bit more technical role. Uh, so over there, again, uh, you have to be curious in everything. You have to be ambitious. Those are core values of our company. Uh, this one requires a bit of technical skills. Um, so here the role basically is uh, one thing is you know, reporting and analysis. That was the previous role, marketing analyst. The other is using that data, how can you predict certain behavior of the customers or for the business? Um, so this goes into that whole prediction domain where you're not just doing reporting and analysis, but you're saying, hey, here is a model that I built that is going to tell us, you know, these are the 10% of the customers who might cancel their subscription because they faced an issue or, um, here, here, here is a people who are ordering things, but they might not be fully happy because we don't really offer everything that covers their taste preferences. Uh, so, yeah. 
That's a really, really interesting role because um, uh, let's take your example. Uh, these are the customers who might cancel because of different mm -hmm. reasons. Uh, if you know that, then you can mm -hmm. figure out why and then you can keep them on board, yes. which is highly valuable to every uh, company. The most most expensive thing is to find a new customer. Yes. So if you can retain a customer, it's immensely mm -hmm. valuable. Yes, uh, we, we always look at both aspects. So one is the company aspect, which is yes, uh, it's very helpful to save those customers. Uh, the other part is, what are we not doing right that those customers want to leave? Uh, that's the customer experience part. How can we delight those customers? Um, so that's, a, that's the other side of it, which is not so related to revenues and cost. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about the skill level, the experience, the experience level that you uh, expect for this program? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so for the data science role, uh, there are some requirements. Uh, so you need to be able to code in Python. Uh, you don't have to be like a world expert in Python, uh, but you should have an intermediate level uh, of knowledge uh, of Python because that's, that's a language we are using to currently uh, code our models and build our infrastructure accordingly. Um, knowing SQL is good, I would say not 100% mandatory. Uh, because we have people in the team who can who can help with that. Um, so I think that the, the most basic requirement here in terms of technical skills is knowing Python language. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's say I'm, or I get a little bit of an echo here. Mm -hmm. um, let's say I'm interested in, in one of these two positions and I want to uh, apply with um, Marley Spoon because I like to eat very well and uh, I like uh, how your company is running their business. Um, how can I make your life easier? What kind of documents uh, should I send you? Uh, how could I present myself uh, in a way that's easy for you to evaluate, but also helps me to shine my, my best sides to you? Okay, um, very simple. Uh, you can just go to our website, apply there directly. Every person who applies to CVs come directly to the hiring manager. So for these two roles, they come directly to me. There's no HR involved, uh, so I personally look at every single CV that comes in. Um, we do not need a cover letter, uh, so I've actually turned that option off when you're trying to apply. Uh, no need to spend time on writing a cover letter. Just make sure your CV is built in a way that I can see your, your personality in there. Uh, what's, what's the first thing you look at in a CV? So the first thing I look at is I look at the past experience. Uh, if it's not relevant, not an issue, but then if you're, for example, applying for a data science role, uh, make sure that you know, your CV does highlight that you have the necessary skills, in this case, you know, Python. So if you know your last two work experiences are about something else and you still know Python, but it's somewhere hidden in your CV, that's hard to figure out. If you just put it on top that you have the skills, uh, that makes it much, much easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, Let's talk very shortly about the two other positions that you're also hiring um, uh, for now. I don't know, are they already on the Mali Spoon website as well? Or? Yeah, they, they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these are data engineers. These are data engineers, yes. Uh, so, so currently we are looking for two data engineers to expand our data engineering team. Uh, so those are a lot more technical positions compared to marketing analyst and data science. Uh, so for the data engineering drill, uh, you do not really need much of a business background uh, because their engineering roles or their technical skills uh, become a lot more important. Uh, again, hiring process wise, very simple. Uh, you go to the website, you apply, CV lands directly with the hiring manager. Um, and in terms of technical skills, I mean, the infrastructure we use, uh, of course, you need to you know SQL uh, for a data engineering role. Uh, Otherwise, it wouldn't be data engineering. Um, and then if you have knowledge of big data, that's great, not mandatory. Uh, we use Amazon Web Services. So if you've worked with that before, that's also gives you bonus points. Uh, if not, that's also okay. That could work. Um, <laughs> okay. So a um, couple of questions. Is are of course of interest for uh, mm -hmm. our audience. First of all, uh, Miley Spoon is working is in English, I understand. Yeah. Um, what if I need a visa to work for you? Does mm -hmm. it make sense to still apply or is it um, something that uh, that you cannot assist with? 
Uh, it absolutely makes sense to apply. So yes, we operate, operate fully in English. Uh, we are already in eight markets. Uh, so even though Berlin is our head office, but all the markets operate in English. Um, in terms of the visa, yes, we do help out. Uh, so we work very closely with the person to assist with the visa. Uh, we, from what I know, we haven't had any issues uh, getting visas done for anyone who wants to join us. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think in the Berlin office, we have people from more than 25 to 30 nationalities and globally probably 50 plus nationalities. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, um, you just mentioned you have an office in Berlin. Um, you are also in, in other countries already. Um, is it possible to um, transfer within the company? Mm -hmm. It is possible. Uh, we had various uh, scenarios where people in Berlin went to Australia or to our US office or the other way around. Uh, it really depends on the role. Uh, so in mm -hmm. some worlds, it is possible easily. In others, where it's uh, the team is sitting in Berlin and the role doesn't make sense to decentralize it, then and then it has to be in Berlin. Uh, but for a lot of roles, uh, it's not an issue. Okay. Um, what do you like personally best about working at Marisbrunn? Personally, the culture. It's 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 uh, it's a great culture. Uh, so some of the things which are very core to our culture is we give people a chance to fail. Uh, right, so we want you to try new things. Uh, if you fail, not an issue, right? We want people to to try things. Uh, we want people to be autonomous. We give a lot of autonomy, so you are not, uh, you know, there isn't like a whole chain of hierarchy and approvals that goes there. Uh, we want people to work autonomously, and we empower them to do that. Uh, plus, we are always making sure the people who are within the company they're constantly trained. Uh, to do better, both at a personal level as well as at a professional level. Um, so we offer them training days, we offer them trainings, we make sure they continue to progress. Okay. Uh, one question that I always ask near the end is, um, which question uh, did I not ask you that you wished I would have asked you? The career progression uh, within Marlis Food, we could talk about that. Okay. Uh, so again, we are, we are a very flexible company. Um, so how, I mean, my, my personal story at Marla Spoon, if I talk about that, uh, I joined about two years ago, uh, coming from a very corporate background and then into the startup culture. Uh, initially, I had no direct reports. Uh, two years later, now I have about 10 uh, and I'm managing three teams. Uh, so if, if you are good, you're ambitious, there is a lot of opportunity to grow uh, with Marla Spoon compared to a very corporate company where you would be stuck in the same position for years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that this will um, will motivate a driven person who wants to contribute and make a difference. Uh, Amar, thank you very much for your time. Uh, if um, listeners of this podcast want to apply, where shall they go? They can simply go to our website, the career section of the open positions are listed there. Um, they just simply have to put in their name, their email address, and upload the CV. That's really it. Great. And I will put a link to uh, your career site in the show notes to this podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you all uh, for joining very much. Um, uh, I hope uh, you will find wonderful new colleagues. I know from my visits there that it's really a great place to start working, Marley Spoon. My name is Chris Piak. I'm the author of How to Win Jobs and Influence Germans. And I hope I see you again in two weeks in the next episode of the Immigrant Spirit Podcast. See you then. Bye-bye.